Did you know there's BPA in cash register receipt? Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. And tonight I'm going to talk uh, about uh, the word float. I'm just concentrating on the sound to give you an example, you know, of how closely related our ling ancient language was, you know, verbally. And uh, if you use your ear, don't get confused too much by your eyes in the writing, then you might be able to catch those things that I pick along my journeys. Again, you know, I present my uh, uh, research as a female you know in the uh, traveling around instead of sitting in the classroom in the academic world and uh, I present that uh, our language you know come from one single common core since ancient time and all of us are just a branch of the uh, whole organism none of us are separate uh, family trees you know so uh, I'm going to start my program uh, tonight should be the 60 uh, eighth uh, episode and if you want to repeat to watch it again type in the program name basket starfish our language core and you can find all the past episodes okay and I just want to change a little bit the Eurocentric view of seeing uh, everything okay so um, it is tonight's po uh, slice just one second let me get it back to the top okay Okay, I'm going to start this now. Uh, this is the shape of the basket starfish. As I said, you know, we all share one common core and every single one of us is just a branch. None of us are different trees uh, because if we look at that, you know, we will have a different time frame and then we will have all those social hierarchy according to the economic power of all the researchers. Okay, and, and that will usher in human hierarchy. So I propose that it needed to be changed, you know, as long as we look at uh, the uh, language family as a uh, basket starfish, then we are all standing on the equal ground. Okay, today, as I said, I will look at the word float because uh, tomorrow, the Thanksgiving, you have the very, very important um, uh, parade, you know, in New York and you will see a lot of float. So I will just compare this word float with um, my own culture, okay? The word float and fly actually comes from a very similar uh, ancient core and uh, of course you know when you say float you know the ancient when they observe nature they will understand easily that anything that like a bubble you know contains air they will just uh, float on top of a water but if they leave any surface they can fly around and of course flying is with more liberty and doesn't stick to the surface of the water and then of course you know also when they see a feather you know also you know they can distinguish very easily what is flow and what is fly you know in their mental concept but even up to this very day you know you will call this a float and you will say that that um, the balloon is flying right because to you is because it's a uh, kind of uh, elevating from the ground so we call it flying but um, as you can see uh, gradually I will compare it to my own culture you will see that the fly actually uh, also has a sense of uh, sailing around because you have the freedom of moving around and let's see how the ancients look at words themselves and and uh, of course you know if you look up uh, the dictionary you will find that the blue is actually uh, the root the, what they call the root of this uh, uh, proto-indo-european root of the of all these English words and and there's this blue and then um, and the other way you can understand it as I said you know fly is like a sailing around you know because it has to do with wind itself and then you will see that you know the word sail you know will have a uh, root you know of sec that they said is the proto-germanic since most of the linguists so far for the last 150 years they are either Dutch or German or English you know so most of them they will point everything either to the proto uh, 
uh, Indo-European or the Proto-Germanic, as if the uh, other branches um, of their language family, they were dumb uh, at those ancient times, they were not speaking at all. So uh, I'm trying to prove that uh, they are not, you know, everyone has been uh, sp uh, spreading around their common verbal language since very ancient time, okay? So let's look at the combination of these two words in the blue, as they said, the um, the Proto-Indo-European or the Proto-Germanic Sikh. Let's see this sound right here. Uh, in Cantonese, we have a very, very uh, famous, you know, parade in Hong Kong every year in a small, very fishing uh, I fishing village, you know, an, an island in an island in Hong Kong. It's called Piu Sik. Okay, Piu Sik for us these days, you know, it means a floating character. Um, and children used to dress in different impersonation and then they try to tell you story from the ancient time and this is what you will see if you go there because it's a very very small fishing village and the streets were very narrow so you will see that they are very very single file you know um, uh, uh, parade and then you will see that a child is always holding an, another child up in the air and then of course you know down here you can understand it as a float because you can see that the push the people are actually pushing the cart which uh, uh, stands this uh, I mean which the this child stands on and then the other supposed to, the pusic is actually standing on top of anything that the child is holding in this case you know he's actually carrying maybe on a lamb like that and that in a sense it is a flying thing and then for us you know it also means something waving around it can mean a, a flag a signal or or something that swims and sail in the air okay so this is what we, we make uh that's the sound music in our uh cantonese sense and then um this is the in the island of cheng chow in hong kong and i will show you a few more to make you understand it uh, more this is another thing you know become uh modern now they actually are uh, other than trying to impersonate you know very old you know le legends and they also pick up political um, news, you know, at that present moment, they can dress up themselves up in, in different impersonation. And then the most important thing is that, you know, people actually marvel at, uh, they couldn't understand why they can make it that way, because uh, this uh, little girl is actually standing on this uh, uh, cooking utensil right up there which the child underneath is holding and also like this you know this little girl is also standing on top of a flower basket and the contact point is just this little point right there that's why we call it you know a uh, pusic it's like a uh, uh, floating or sailing in the air okay so uh, of more of these images, again, this little girl is also floating on top of this little lamb right there. And another girl uh, floating on top um, of an umbrella. The contact point is also just this little thing right there. So um, if you are from the West, you call it a float. And then if they call the float or Indo-European, call, uh, call it the root is the blue, you will see that we actually call it peel okay the action itself the uh, the the adjective itself is peel is to means to float or to fly in the wind and of course you know as time went by we act, have actually you know more than 50 words you know develop it with the same sound and we only distinguish them by visual and this part we put it uh, we put a wind part in Chinese right there uh, for viewers to understand it's a flow or fly by the wind and then when we put the water part right there we can understand this flow or fly in the water okay so that's how the Chinese distinguish it is by visual but the sound is actually retains the same sometimes we do change the tone like peel 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 something like that but then basically it's still the peel exactly like this the peel like this in the proto-indo-european sound and and if you think we are of a different 
family you can uh, look at the following slides more and then uh, because the Hong Kong preserved this ancient tradition and then recently because China opens up and then they begin after the cultural revolution China uh, begin to pick up a lot of the uh, ancient tradition back from places like Taiwan and Hong Kong they redeveloped it because after after years and years of suppression in culture actually they re reinvent everything with a lot of vigor so it's like a, a, a when you have a lot of potential being pressed down all of a sudden when you're given a chance you know it become an explosion of all this inventive power so uh, what is very interesting that what happened in Hong Kong preserved for years and years of the, the little uh, uh, boy you know in the float and then the little girl uh, fly on top they actually ended up with uh, the technology of this you know you can see that you know you can still call it a flow right there when this lady is holding uh, the thing that stand two little uh, child right there and and they are holding something which another two child hold on and then this stands there and then look at this you know this two little child on the two ends is actually like flying in the air the only contact point is right here and of course you know for them it's a secret they don't want to reveal it easily but still um people still go to see it you know them and and because of the reinvention and because of the competition of the nearby uh, uh as villages this is a village village in the south in, in the south of China uh, but to the north of Hong Kong okay they pick it up back from Hong Kong and then they actually re invent, invent this, the thing with very interesting new technology look at this and then this is the next one you can see uh, another float right there you can see the one sits there you know with this pole two little child standing on the pole the, the well, one of the child holds a flower basket with a little girl standing just on top of the of the flower basket and this child holds one thing right there and the child stands on there and this child is actually standing right in the middle of the air and also this one you know the only thing that you can see they link together is just right there so um, you will see that you know all this flows and and and, and like sailing in the air it still um, survived in every single culture the years went by you know every culture developed their own you know techniques and if you go to Spain they have their way of doing their float if you go to Japan they have their way you know but so far you know the the um, the southern Chinese one is a very interesting one because you know they can really find a technique to to flow the child you know in mid-air without seemingly any contact okay uh, this is uh, as I said is a secret but uh, what I'm looking at today is actually the the, the action and the word of the peel okay and then is it flying or, or, or in the concept is it sailing in the air this is uh, how I look at the ancient's head okay so if you look into the um, uh, I mean the computer you will see the uh, the root of the word uh, float you know float uh, is, is this peel and they keep telling you to distinguish it from the peel you know and um, which has a different meaning but to me these two words actually has the same root you know they just branch out in different direction but uh, recently the, uh, the the western scholar distinguish it by just the different spelling one u and one o but the sound is very similar to peel 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 something like that and then it is really proto-indo-european or it's mere eurocentric view they are presenting to you now i'm presenting to you you know how i hear it from country to country you know how i compare them and uh, look at this peel right there again is it pure in, in uh, proto-indo-european and look at this if you look to 
take, talking about a float, the most ancient image of the float is found in the Hittites. You know, you will see that they were using a blown up animal skin. This is a very common thing when I lived in the Middle East, of course. You know, now you if you blow up the um, uh, animals, after you kill the animal, uh, after you extracted all the meat and bones, and you can actually make it into a bag. This bag itself, you can use it to con uh, to put milk in, to put a lot of uh, products you, you want to put in. And I actually saw them store dates inside. And then because once you put it in, the, or actually after you squeeze all the air out, it become an airtight container. So this bag has been used for thousands and thousands of years, you know, all through cultures. So, but this, in this case, they what they contain is just air itself. So with air, it's just like the observation of a bubble in the air. So it actually flows the people, okay? So the Hittai used this as a float, you know, as the uh, scholar will tell you the, the word float, F-L-O-A-T. The, the root is the pure right here. And look at this. This is a picture taken, you know, in the in the Indian continent. Uh, the Indians were also using a lot of uh, calf uh, skins. You know, they also blow it up. They use also the skin to cross the river. This is the, the origin of the flow that you use. You know, of course now the flow you you can use it just as a circle. And a lot of the uh, children's flow, you know, that you make it into different animal shape. But the origin origin of that is really an animal itself you know so this is at the beginning of the 18th century you know they were still uh, very obvious and another picture this is a uh, uh, Chinese and you can see that you know it, you the Chinese actually have the the legs of the animal actually tied around their back and then um, here they actually blow in air into it and uh, all these people who navigate up and down all those famous river in in China they were supposed you know uh, to be naked they weren't wearing anything so they were actually wearing this you know the, this is their livelihood you know they take people up and down the river they take goods you know so this is a very common flow that they use so of course in Chinese there is a very very ancient writing you know uh, and you will see that you know we can use you you can see that you know it's, it's, it's like a empty bag you know that you can stay inside and this is the water part right there it has the sound of pa pa pao po pao and depends on the situation you use it as I said again and again we change tones you know according to the situation but uh, we, we understand that Po actually we understand it as a bubble or we understand it's the action of floating around you know the Po and, and blue and float and, and flow and either I am speaking in English or I, I am speaking in Proto-Indo-European or I am speaking in English it, it just doesn't make um, any difference you know and the other writing that we have again is the water part and then a child right here and then you see a hand you know uh, holding the child and then of course you know sometimes you know it also uh, divide uh, divert, I mean diverted into other meaning but here in 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 one of the sense we pronounce it as fao fao actually means is to flow okay flow and fao okay fao is to to, to, to stay on top the of the river on top of a liquid of, of, on, of water okay so in English you can say flow or float of course the fluid all these words you know you can understand it in the same sense in the same area and then of course you know when you blow air even the flow and the blow is very uh, closely related because you know without air you cannot float okay so um, the B and the you will understand that the B and the F is also a sound shifting and so um, the, the sense of flow and fly is also very similar because the flow
floating way, it's for in the ancient way, it's a very speedy way of moving along a river and it's much faster than walking, okay? So uh, for them it's a very speedy way. So um, the fly is a way and also you become the flown also. And have you ever run wonder why, you know, uh, you use the word fry? Fry because whatever the food is, uh, when it's ready, it's always floating in the oil, okay? So um, the only difference in the uh, resting sense is that as I was talking about the liquid consonants, you will see that the L is an indicator of anything smooth and flowing like the liquid, okay? So the L liquid um, uh, consonant is always added there to give the viewer, you know, and also uh, an indicator of something related to the water. Very similar to the Chinese putting this part to indicate to the viewer that it is something connected with water, okay? So this is L is for the West, so for the visual distinction, and this is the, for the for the Eastern, for the Chinese to distinct this is a uh, water and liquid related. So it's the same way of function. And then uh, after a lot years of observation for me, the L and the R difference sometimes, you know, in terms of liquid, when they are both, um, as I said, sometimes the R is the, represents the head, okay? But the, when the L and the R represent the, the liquid, the R is always something rougher and the L is something more lethal and more smooth, okay? So this is something very, very interesting. It sounds that the ancient, uh, the, the ancient West is also very visual in the, in in the, in the sense okay so now i move on and then what's the relationship of water and fire? When I look at more and more deeper into the origin of this uh, two sound, the pure and the pure, and then you will see the uh, Sanskrit root also uh, have the plu, pluta, pluti, and also the change of the cons uh, the vowel right there, plavati. They all come from one single uh, root of the plu. Plu for the ancient uh, Sanskrit, it all means the flood and the flow again uh, related to water okay a lot of water and uh, related to flown and the fly it related to swim and the sail it also related to the blow and the fire okay so uh, sometimes you know you do not understand why water and fire is related you have to go back to the ancient time the ancient doesn't think like you the ancient observe the uh, natural phenomenon they link the things together according to the experience Okay, so you will see gradually why, but I will show you the Chinese writing of fire. This is fire, and in Cantonese, the sound is four. And then, um, if you know uh, Greek, you know, of course, for tear is also the fire, force is the light. So, four and, and force is all four in Chinese, and force in Greek, it also means the, the, the light that gives, the, I mean, the fire that gives the light. Okay, or the other way of saying is, is the pira. Pira is also, uh, you know, what you understand as a pile of wood burning. Okay, so the F and the P is also a sound shifting. The ancient used them to distinguish visually for themselves. And then now I introduce you to the very basic component of all this ancient Chinese writing of Piu Sang, okay? This Piu actually uh, came from a very ancient thing. It actually has nothing to do with water. Uh, if you look at the dictionary, it actually means a flying sparks. Obviously, it means fire, not water, okay? But how come all the later Piu Sang is closely related to water, just like the ancient, uh, I mean, uh, Sanskrit? And because, look at this, um, you could look at the two hands with this uh, symbol right there and that it means the flying spark and pure and as you can see the ancients uh, spend a lot of time looking at the, the darkness you know in the fire they know what is of something flying and of course how they uh, generate fire is always a circular motion okay so you will see it easily that the Chinese already draw it out two hands with the circular motion and also the Greek also used this to show themselves you know this is is a circular motion that caused the light and the fire okay so the four and force um, you, uh, bring out the fire and the pure actually becomes a firing sparks once the spark is made the fire 
there is 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 created, okay. And the Chinese started from this uh, very uh, beginning, and then we keep putting uh, different parts to distinguish visually. When we put a wing part, it become a flow and to something to wave back and forth, okay. It become the sound of pew. The pew other than to float around, it also means the whirlwind because you know it becomes um, um closely related to the action of flying action of flying is something to do with speed so that's why they begin to go to, to connect it with something you know with speed okay and then after the relation of water and fire here comes the war the relationship of the fire and the wind okay and then uh because you know the ancient never never forget that when you try to light a fire like that uh this is the, what we know that how they start the fire this is a lot of the uh in uh, native american artifact how the the fire stone how they drill the stone to spot start the spark but once you have the spark you do need wind once you have wind you know um, you do need the wind to, to, to build a fire okay and um, nowadays because we use too much the stove we forgot that we have to blow the wind okay and it's it's only with wind that you start to make the spark uh, stronger and then the fire becomes stronger so this peel 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 all have to do with the wind the blow and also with the uh, flying uh, sparks okay so now let me show you the core sound of this pew right there uh, if you say this is indo-european you have the plos in greek as sail you have the flota in greek as the swim sail and float you have the figas figas in greek as the flea look at this fee 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 uh, uh, and, and and blue okay you have the fluto in uh, latin as the float you have the fuhren in um, german as the sail you have the fujio in latin as the fu fugitive and look at this this is a chinese writing and um, again the 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 person right there with the hand but we have the row part right there we have the sang fu fu is actually means the fujio the fugitive okay and then we have this again you know look at this is similar this is the row part this is the water part we have the fao okay it's obvious that people in ancient time if you need to get away they also float away they have the sound of pao and Pole, okay so the pavati the plu in um, in sanskrit and the pew in chinese the pew the pew in chinese the pew and which means speed the flay um i think i cannot finish this uh sanskrit uh, i mean this uh slide i will stop right here but i hope you can go back to youtube uh type in the basket starfish your uh, uh